everybody. Welcome to Verbology Digest. I'm Sam Stanovic. This is Ed Archibald. Hey, nice to see you guys. And uh, for today, we have a special top 10 list. A lot of folks have been eager to hear about this. How so, top is your top 10 list? How uh, what? How high is your top 10 list? All of them should be high, but, you know, are you knocking well, it down already? It's called the top 10 for a reason. Okay, let's see if it makes it. It is high. Okay. Uh, Anyway, uh, this list of TV shows that were made into movies. Oh, God, here we go. And they should not have been made into movies. Then why were they? I have no idea. The filmmakers were on some sort of who knows what. Drugs? Well, most likely. Well, let's not dwell on that. Because uh, these movies, for some reason, were not critically acclaimed. And whatever these filmmakers were thinking. Now, they were probably smoking dope while they were making them or directing them. Well, I'll let you draw your own conclusions to that, folks. So anyway, let's start the list. Number 10, Bewitched. Oh, they put that into a movie? Yes, they did. How the heck did they do that after the, such a decent series? Well, I mean, personally, the series, I thought, wasn't very good to begin with. But then again, a lot of people loved that show. The start Elizabeth Montgomery, who was on back in the 60s. She plays a witch named Samantha Stevens. Ooh. I watched the series as a little kid, that's why I say well, that. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, it probably could warm the hearts of a lot of little kids and basically her herself getting into all these antics with her families and all that. And uh, they made this into a movie with... The favorite part of Bewitched that I liked was when she twitched her nose and, made, and cleaned up the whole house in about 22 seconds. Uh, photography, special effects. Those were the days, man. And, Gotta get uh, him back. Anyway, they made this into a movie with Nicole Kidman in the role of Samantha. Or... Oh my God. So many people they could have used except for her. Uh, did you have any ideas? I'm eager to hear who you no, thought I don't know. Sharon Stone. Boo you, Nicole Kidman was awesome. Hey. Hey, you shut up over there. Yeah, you're this the sound This is my show. You're the sound man. You're supposed to be quiet. Silent, I mean. I know that sounds contradictory, but let's not dwell on that. Sharon Stone? Seriously? Seriously. Can you imagine her twitching her nose? I know she can cross her legs, but that's a whole different matter. But anyway, moving on. Number nine, Leave it to Beaver. You know, you know who uh, my mother used to tell me I reminded her of? Who? Oh. Eddie Haskell. I can believe that. And uh, because, uh, you know, Eddie could be a real newest Pain in the neck. No telling. No kidding me. And uh, for some reason, they got the idea to make this into a movie in the 1990s. If I lived next to Eddie Hasp, I'd have shot him. So would I. No, I, actually, I'm not condoning that. I wouldn't have. I probably would have just punched his teeth out. Well, let's not dwell on that. Uh, anyway, they made this into a movie with Christopher McDonald as Ward Cleaver. Need I say more? No. Moving on. Number eight. Car 54, where are you? Oh, that was a good... I like the uh, the first show. The movie probably wasn't much, but... Oh, uh, yeah. And uh, we ought to make a special note, folks, that most of these movies we haven't seen. We've seen the TV versions, but most of the movies haven't seen them for obvious reasons. Who'd want to see them? My point exactly. I'd rather be blind. No. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. You couldn't see him then. That's the idea. Couldn't see anything. Okay. okay. Anyway, they, they made this into a, a movie, believe it or not, with John C. McGinley in the role of Francis Muldoon, who was played by Fred Gwynn in the original series. McGinley's a good I mean, actor, for, first but why of all, did they that, put him in that role? Yeah, if, if that isn't a red flag, I don't know what is. I'm telling you. And I'm not hearing any argument from the sound department, so they agree. Our sound department don't mean much anyway. Well, eh, okay, moving on. Number seven, lost in space. If it's lost in space, how do you find it? I know this movie was really lost for certain reasons. That movie was reasons. awesome, Sam. Hey, we told you once before, stay out of my movie. And, okay, uh, why was it awesome? Okay, and he's silent like he's supposed to be, so let's not dwell on that. Uh, Lost in Space, they turned this into a film uh, 
I mean, the original series ran in the 60s with Jonathan Harris and Guy Williams and all those guys. But then they turned it into a movie with Gary Oldman and William Hurt. This movie really hurt. Maybe that's why they cast him. Wasn't well, that on that? Um, and I have no idea what they were thinking with this one. So, Lost in Space, emphasis on Lost. Well, they tried to find it, but they couldn't find the movie, so they just left it be Lost. Yeah, it just stayed out there. Didn't so, go to the moon. It may have went to Mars before anybody else did. Who knows? Yeah, I'll, let me tell you. Okay, and this one, may, this next one may stir up a little bit of controversy from the peanut gallery. I don't know, but number six, the Wild Wild West. So what was so wild about the West? Well, the I lived in the Midwest. I don't know why they were so wild about the Wild Wild West. Actually, I thought the movie was very tame, ironically. But uh, the show was a whole heck of a lot better than the movie. Well, okay, uh, somebody uh, from off camera apparently disagrees, but let's not go on that. Uh, but anyway, uh, the thought of uh, you know casting Will Smith in the role of Jim West, uh, considering he was originally played by Robert Conrad, kind of a. I don't know what they were smoking, but... Uh, I don't know what kind of dope they were on, but they were on something. I mean, I mean, well, I mean, Will Smith can bring a lot of wit and charm into any role. I just remember him in one scene. That's a man's head. That is a man's head. That huh? is all he said for about five uh, minutes in a certain scene in the film. And I'm like, Robert Conrad would not have done that. Nah. Especially rap a theme song at the end of the film. Yeah, well. That, that, I don't know what they were. Anyway, it, the reason why most of the movies on this list are on this list because they didn't do the original series justice. Right. And I yeah. don't think that was the case with this one. You know. And uh, it made some money, but... What, $5 million? That's peanuts next to what some uh, of them do. I'm pretty sure it made more than $5 million. Oh. I'd have to check, but... Well, yeah. But it didn't deserve to as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Number five. The Lone Ranger. This one's more recent. Uh, at Why least did he it, have Tonto if he's supposed to be the Lone Ranger? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, because he does he ride alone? Apparently not. He still needs a sidekick. So, and uh, that was the way it was. The horse could have given him the kick if he needed one. It's like something very wrong with that horse. Something very wrong with this film. That's what I would have said. But uh, Johnny Depp is awesome. Shut up. Hey, uh, well, great. Anyway, thank you. You're okay. supposed to be quiet and be the sound man, Mr. Uh, anyway, man over uh, there. Anyway, you know, yeah, Chinese dip as Tonto, not a that wasn't a bad idea. I've seen worse, believe it or not. Uh, but uh, the, I thought the film was a little too quirky and a little too suggestive for. They probably put Johnny Depp in it because he's a short little guy, you know. Uh, he's not that short. Or at least they didn't make him look short, but uh, oh. but anyway, you know, Johnny Depp plays Tonto in this film. On the original show, it was Jay Silverheels and Clayton Moore was the Lone Ranger. And uh, in this one, you know, it, it, I thought it was a little too quirky and it dragged on for quite a bit. I was like, uh, okay, we're coming down to the end and the grand finale, they're on a train going and you're hearing... Dun -dun 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 the famous uh, William Tell Overture theme. Where is the end of this movie, huh? Well, it's uh, we're ending it right now, so we're moving on. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, number four, the A Team. Now you might have some memory of this one because oh, yeah. it was on back in the eighties. Well, yeah, I know. You know, Mr. T. I'm paying the fool. Yeah, I can admit, Quentin Rampage Jackson in a role that was played by Mr. T, not going to work. That's an automatic failure right there, as far as I'm concerned. I, I don't know what they were thinking, trying where to recast they, where the role played by Mr. T. were trying to put that movie? Well, the show was a good show. The movie, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know how uh, Hannibal has his famous phrase, I love it when a plan comes together? Well, this movie did not come together at any given point, as far as I was concerned. It was a bunch of different parts that didn't gel. They may have I mean, made the movie in, Alaska, in California, but they showed it in Alaska because it wasn't worth being there. I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, you know, they make most of the movies in, in California, but 
Alaska so far away. They put it. They sh didn't show it in Alaska. Terrible. Boo. <laughs> they had to show it in Alaska. That's how bad it was. Yeah. Because nobody wanted to see it. Oh, they wanted to see uh, the glaciers, but uh, who knows what. And, uh, man, I don't know what they were thinking with this film, but, uh, uh, boy, it was just a mess as far as I was concerned. We're now down to our final three in the top ten list of uh, TV shows that were made into movies but should not have been made into movies. Well, you know. Some of these directors, they don't know what they were doing anyway, so let's go. Yeah, I know you'd rather sleep through it, but let's well, not. Number three, Scooby-Doo. Wow. Where are you? They where? didn't even know where the dog was. How the heck did they make a movie out of it? Well, uh, they put a CGI dog in it. Oh, yeah, well, that's normal. Which uh, was... Impossible, but well. Oh, whatever. I mean, first, first of all, I mean, this film. I mean, there were two good things I thought about it, but that was pretty much it. Uh, Matthew Lillard in the role of Shaggy. Wait a second. If there were two good ones, do you, what did you think they were good? The beginning and the end. That's what it was just the end, but but, but besides that, uh, and uh, the, uh, and Matthew Lillard is Shaggy, and the other one was uh, Linda Cardellini. I believe her name is was was in the role of Velma. I thought she did the role. She of was Shaggy. hot. Everybody's hot to you, big boy. And I thought I told you to be quiet so I can do my movie here, my show here. I don't want to hear you anymore, okay? Uh, this is my show too, you know. Yeah, I know. Well, our show. Then. You're just tagging along. <laughs> well, what, Scooby, what did Scooby do anyway? I have no idea. He, was, he wasn't even there. He had a CGI fill in for him. Uh, anyway, uh, the, uh, but aside from the yeah, roles of... Scooby-Doo alone. He looked for Scooby Snacks. Yeah, he was probably looking for Scooby's neck too, Paul, I'm sure. We got a lot of yelling from off camera here, folks, so bear with us here. Um, so anyway, Scooby-Doo, uh, I mean, aside from the roles of Shaggy and Velma, this film really was completely pointless. Non-existent, basically. It felt like a teen beach party movie gone horribly wrong. It really did. And uh, Freddie Prince Jr. in the role of Fred... Fred's not that dumb, and he's not that into himself. And uh, Daphne, Sarah Michelle Gellar, good looking, but she was more stuck up than I ever thought. I mean, who knows how much. Well, you know. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, I'm going to spoil this for you folks that haven't seen it. I'm doing you a favor, believe me. Don't. They, why they turned Scrappy-Doo into a villain is beyond me. You may, may want to make him a I mean, real piece of scrap. Who knows? Well, this movie was a piece of scrap, but that's who knows entirely. Scrappy Doo got puppy power. Well, puppy well, power, puppy, among other that things. That puppy probably died as a young pup. Well, who knows? This film should not have been made. I'm telling you, it really shouldn't have. So we're moving on to number two. Number two, The Flintstones. Oh, we got Fred right over there. Up yours, Ed. Actually, he looks more like Betty did in the film, but that's not well. But that's really bad. Um, Up yours, Sam. And John Goodman was awesome in that film. Aside from John Goodman, everything else. Eh. Rick Moranis. Yes. Barney Rubble. Okay. I thought you played Fred pretty well, though. Yeah, you're talking to him, right? Yeah. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> um, that's, uh, the, and he can hear me pretty good because he's uh, just my uh, sound, uh, our mean, sound guy over there. I mean, I, I mean, I, I thought the film was just, a, it didn't have the right uh, tone to it. Did they even yeah. have the car in there? Yeah, there was a car. What kind of, a Ford? Uh, no, it wasn't a Ford, it was a rock. Oh, they actually went to the rock, huh? Well, the car was made of rock. <laughs> yeah. That's well, the idea. Have, did they get a speeding ticket? Uh, with those cars, no, speeding tickets could not have been possible oh, with, well. with the way those things moved. Yeah, that's I mean, slow. unless you want to give them speeding for running too long, but let's not even go there. I mean, but, but the biggest blunder this film, I thought, was casting Rosie O'Donnell, I thought, in the role of Betty. Oh, Rosie O'Donnell. The only casting you can do in her is put her in a, put her in a pine box. 
if that isn't an insult, I don't know what is. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they make you want to put her in a different kind of casting, apparently. One made of plaster or something else, but then again, that. that. Why I, waste, mean, I mean, that, why I mean, waste the plaster of Paris? I mean, uh, I mean, Rosie O'Donnell, I mean, she's got some good things put in the role of Betty Rubble. Betty I, Rubble? Oh, my I, God. No, that, that, that just was, that didn't work. And uh, that, that, not to mention, there were so many other things in this film that I thought were just, yeah. They could have cast Rosie O'Donnell as, uh, I mean, uh, they, Bigfoot? Dino. I mean, she would have been miscast even as a rock. <laughs> but let's not dwell on that one either, but... Anyway, and uh, I mean, there were so many <laughs> things about this one that drove me nuts. Uh, except maybe Halle Berry. She looks good in leopard skin, I can tell you that. Or whatever she was Halle wearing. Halle Berry looks good in anything she wants to wear. Yeah. Um, okay, and uh, the grand finale. Drum roll, please. <laughs> nice, guys. Number one, The Last Airbender. Boo! Is that for the movie or for the TV no, show? No, that, that's for the movie. Okay, I agree. Yeah, they they Didn't just see they, that one myself. Well, uh, it's uh, I don't I don't think this show would appeal to your taste, all things considered. But then again, you don't have a lot of taste anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh well. Uh, this uh, last time I do a show with this guy. Well, you'll probably die before you get a chance to do another one. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, uh, then you can bring your fat guy in from over there. Uh, but he take up too much space. Up here, Sam. I had that one coming, didn't I? What? What's the... They try to, they try to put the two of you on, on the camera, and you'd be the only one that would talk about the show, fellas. <laughs> At least I have hair. <laughs> Focus. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, this one, where was I? Oh yeah, the last Airbender. Uh, this one was based on a t on an animated series on Nickelodeon. Oh, the Kids Network. That's why. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, was based on uh, the first season of uh, the animated series. It ran for three seasons. Oh, I thought and, it, and this, it was so bad. Why did it make it past the first? No, the animated series was great. That's the point I'm trying to make here. Oh, okay. Uh, Sorry. But, I mean, but uh, they had the idea. To try and take the first season, which is like 20 some odd episodes of a half hour in length. Oh my God. That's like, I know, that's long even for you. Uh, I'd have gone to sleep by then. You would have fallen asleep after the first five minutes. Okay, uh, would have uh, st uh, tried to stretch like 20 some odd hours or something, or 10 hours to try and squeeze that into two hours. You're already fighting a losing battle. Oh, and yeah. then you get M. Night Shyamal Shyamalan, Shyamalan a ding dong or whatever, uh, to direct this thing. That that's another. Oh well. And uh, finally, and finally, anyway, you so know, it it may, trying to recast uh, animated characters whose voices and animation were spot on. They could have used you to animate it. You'd have done a better job. Probably, but then again. I, I don't have the quite experience, but that's besides the point. <laughs> uh, but, uh, I mean, the, the, the casting was horrible. I mean, they cut out too much stuff. They pretty much took the humor out of it, from what I've been told. I haven't seen the film. I'm going on other people's opinions, folks. If you don't have any but, humor, uh, what do you have? You don't even have a movie. Well, you may have a movie. It just won't be funny. Huh. Must, started David, must have started David Cravey then, huh? <laughs> I suppose it probably would have, wouldn't it? Uh, inside joke for those of you who don't know, uh, and uh, so and uh, th this one was just, I mean, the, and the fact that they haven't tried to make another one tells you the story, pretty much. Well, uh, do we want to review the top ten list now? Go ahead. Okay, uh, well, a little quick review here for those of you who missed anything. You didn't miss much, but uh, number ten. Top 10 TV shows that should not have been made into movies, but were. Number 10, Bewitched. Number 9, Leave it to Beaver. Number 8, Car 54, Where Are You? Number 7, Lost in Space. Number 6, The Wild Wild West. Number 5, The Lone Ranger. Number 4, The A-Team. Number 3, Scooby-Doo. 
Number two, the Flintstones. Number one, the last airbender. Boo! Boo. I know. You suck. And uh, and if, if any of you have any opinions on what shows you felt should not have been made into movies, and there's sure a lot of them, in fact. Dragon Ball Z. Okay, we got one already. Garfield. Um, oh, <laughs> we could do, I think we're going to do a volume two on this list. Don't you think, folks? We that should? sounds like we should. Yeah, probably. Cat in the Hat. Oh, gosh. We're going to have to put some of our... Was that even a TV series? It was a book. Yeah, my point exactly. All right, so, let's wrap it okay, up. Okay, so anyway, folks... I'm uh, going to wrap you up in a minute. Hey, I'm the director. Anyway, you talk, you saved that for the sound man. So anyway, uh, folks... Uh, uh, for quick on. Stop. Bye, folks, because things are getting out of hand here. So, Stop. See you later. Anyway. Cut.